this is week number 10. That you'll be. So, I believe that um, the H2 optimal control, H2 optimal control, the way presented last time is very difficult to understand. So, so today I'm going to look at the same problem, but from a different angle. In particular, I want you to take a look of this. Uh, so you have a plan. So you have a W. You have a Z. Okay. So you have a U. You have a Y. So, but you may ask, where is X? Okay. Where is X? Where is X? X is what? the state of the system. So this is output variable. This is for uh, performance assessment. Where is X? Okay. So it's inside here. We never actually explicitly talking about it. So, but we know that X is not directly uh, measurable, okay? Measurable. So then, um, I think one of the ideas to introduce H2 control instead of simply say, oh, find me, uh, sorry, I put a K in here. So, uh, find me a K that minimize my, no, no, this is, you minimize my uh, T, Z, W, okay? T, Z, W. You minimize that for me. So that's uh, H2 control, H2 optimal control. Uh, there are multiple ways to solve this problem, okay? Multiple ways. Uh, so we present in a Kenzo's book. Okay, I'll go through those slides for you. It's only about six slides about H2 derivation, okay? And it's too compact for you. It's hard to understand. So today I'm going to do the same thing, but from a different angle, from a state feedback, let's say full state feedback, full state feedback, H2 control, H2 optimal control. Okay? So we assume that uh, all the states x are measurable. We assume all of them are measurable. After that, we say, oh, actually you cannot measure, but you only have y, how you construct the x, then is something called LQE. It's a linear quadratic estimation of state, state estimation. And people also call this is uh, observer, okay? It's actually it's a full state observer, okay? Observer, full state observer. So then you put this together and you solve this problem, okay? So there is a middle uh, step storm in here, okay? So you have x hat, okay? x hat, x hat. So you see that uh, we have learned LQR problem. In here we learn a LQR problem. In the full state feedback, you have A and B, you know, you have a A and B, you have Q and R, okay? and how you come out of my K, okay? Such that uh, my original uh, system is X plus B, U, and Y is X, okay? So the full state, the, uh, full state is measurable, okay? And then, um, when I apply minus K, X, okay? Then this one will minimize, okay, my, uh, zero to infinity, and x transverse qx plus uh, u transverse ru, okay? You will minimize that by using this u, okay? This u. okay? And actually, it's a control law. In here, this is actually a control signal. This guy is a signal. 
This is a U of T, right? So the U of T. So I think we solve this problem regarding what is the signal, what is the control law by introducing what? Contragens maximum principle. Okay? Introducing something called lambda t, which is called cus state or adjoint. Okay? So that's a way we introduce LQR, LRE, DRE, R, uh, uh, algebra, this algebraic Ricard equation versus a Ricard differential equation. So hope you will be able to revisit last time. We recorded all the lectures, so you will be able to go back and see what we discussed. So today, today, we'll assume that uh, this part is solved, okay? This part is solved. Then we combine this part. Then you could come to here. So in this case, uh, we have both two matrices, okay, two gain matrices to decide. So this is like uh, we said, what is the K? Okay, what is the K? And here, we're usually using KL, uh, we use the L matrix. What is the uh, observer gain L? Okay, or the gain matrix L. So these are two unknown gain matrices. Okay, gain matrices. So in other words, in other words, this K, okay, this K, okay, this K is not simply like this. Uh, this is a static, static. Static case, static case. Okay. So this is for LQR. Okay, for LQR, of course, this is static. But what if I have a general H2? So that is no longer static, it will be K of S. Okay? Is a transfer function matrix. Is a dynamic. So that's why we say LQR is a special case of S2. Okay? So today we are going to clarify all those type of concepts by seeing some different framework, okay? Following these two steps. Okay, following these two steps. So we are going to move forward by doing this. So I find out that uh, the presentation in this 14 pages are uh, very nice, okay, are very nice. So I'm going to, I hope you can read it, can you? Can you read it enough? So refer to the picture in here, we only have two variables uh, outside, y is z, y is y, z and y, okay? y is used for feedback. Z is used for performance assessment. Okay? So then we have a, a partition of the G. So you have a V is like our W in here. U is our input signal. So then what I care is uh, TZW. So what is TZW? It is from W to Z. Then this is uh, actually a lower linear fractional transformation of G and K. So it's G, this is G, this is K. So it's a RFT, okay? RFT. So this is a RFT, okay? Lower linear transformation. Uh, lower fractional transformation. So this is actually a, a FGK you can, in terms of this one, you can write in terms of this one. Of course, you need to assume that uh, you have a well closeness in here. Okay, was nothing here. So now you want to design the K 
you can design this k of obviously not all k will make this one uh, well defined, right? <coughs> so you need to find out all internally stabilizing k to make this one um, uh, well posed. Okay, inverse exist. Then we talked about Euler parameterization, right? So that's the next step. So our problem here is giving this format. The k is something, uh, j2 is a uh, two norm square. Uh, this is a function of k. Uh, we want to try to uh, minimize this such two norm. So this is a uh, very uh, straightforward input output point of view using transfer function matrices, uh, using RFT, and using well postness, using uh, two norm. So this is, this is nothing but TZW, okay? TZW, okay, I hope you are in, I use TZW a lot, so I hope you understand this is my TZW, okay? Closed loop transfer function. Okay. So of course, uh, we also have state space realization or representation of this. So then you will see I have three equations. One is state equation, of B1, B2. And of course, you have uh, Z output and Y output, okay? So you have C1, C2, and D1, 1, 2, and D2, 1, okay? Of course, you say, oh, should I do a D1, uh, 1, 1? So you have, uh, here Z, you have a term from uh, V directly. Uh, no, we don't consider that, okay? We don't consider that. So it's, it's uh, strictly proper. So D basically is zero. So this z due to u, due to v, that d is, is zero, okay? Only the coupling part. So the d11 one one is zero, d22 two two is also zero, okay? So I, I think this type of uh, format is easy for us, okay? So let's move on. So the g of s is a, b, c, d, yeah, like that. And here, uh, see that uh, you have a D11, D22 is zero, okay? We discuss strictly proper, okay? Strictly proper. So the, this term, this term is all, uh, is also uh, called direct feed through term, okay? Direct feed through term. We assume they are zero, okay? They are zero. So if it is not zero, I mentioned what's going to happen. If you have a slightly constant, then you add its square from zero to infinity, then that value will be infinity, right? So that's why we cannot allow this non-zero, okay? Well, this two must be zero. Understand that? So that's the reason we set to zero. If not, then uh, the, the, the final j will be infinity, okay? So I hope you can uh, see this, this uh, so this is also interesting. For physical system, always will have a zero gain at the infinity gain at uh, frequency. And that's the g infinity should be zero. Okay. Uh, that that means we don't have a direct feed through term. Okay. So d is zero. Okay. So uh, these are the assumptions to make the system uh, attractable. So we are talking about this uh, three equations, state equation, uh, z output equation, y output equation, okay, z. So here we have um, x, uh, we have uh, v, we have u, then here we have x dot, and we have z, y, okay? So I hope everybody feel comfortable. It is basically writing the format like this one, okay, like this one. So you may feel this direct through term, D2, D11 here is zero, and D22 here is also zero, okay. And I hope in the future, whenever you see, this this is called a transfer function matrix realization. Whenever you see this one with a solid, with a solid line, that means a realization. But if you have a dotted line, that is a partition, okay? Be careful. 
is very different. So whenever we write 3.7, it is equivalent to saying I'm writing this, this format, okay? Equivalent to saying, okay? So this is not a matrix partition anyway. So then to make this system tractable, we make assumptions here. So AB2 is stabilizable. AB2 is here. AB2, let's go here. A, B2. B2 is the real control, so you need to be uh, controllable. And controllable is a stronger concept than stabilizable, right? Okay, so I hope this is clear. So now we have a much weaker requirement uh, called stabilizable. So stabilizable is a much weaker requirement than controllable. D12, D12, this uh, transpose, transpose is invertible. Uh, I think this is uh, reasonable. And D12, C1 is zero. That's probably also reasonable because they don't have any uh, direct uh, connection there. Okay. C1A, no unobservable modes on the imaginary axis. This is kind of linked to uh, uh, detectability, okay? It's weaker, much weaker than detectability. And C2A is detectable, that means, that means what? C2A, C2 and A, that means, so if C2A is observable, that means based on Y, you will be able to reconstruct the X. Understand? That, that, that's needed, okay? So this detectable means, although I cannot have X measurable, my state X not measurable, but it's detectable, meaning I can reconstruct in the observable form, observer form to get an estimation of my state X, okay? And this also, um, the invertible is uh, technical and maybe physical. This is zero is also required right here. AB1 is no uncontrollable modes on the imaginary axis, okay? Uh, AB1 is here. So A, B1, B1. B1 is the one we do it for uh, performance assessment. Uh, the requirement of no imaginary uh, modes, okay, modes, that means you should not have a pure integrated, okay, you should not have pure integrated. So these are the a1 to A4, B1 to B4 are those uh, standard assumptions. So now we are trying to make solution that, uh, so the first one for A1, B1, then you have a uh, output feedback, okay? Output feedback. So the reason is you can, you can reconstruct X, so we can solve the error cube R problem. So let's uh, take uh, another look about uh, H2. So in, uh, some, some people may say that the L2 can be adding all uh, uh, different uh, direction here. The EK is the direction. And you put an impulse in that channel and you get an output. So then you add all the output uh, component uh, together. So, so this is from a kind of energy point of view. Energy point of view. Um, so that is uh, 3.8. Uh, 3.8 is called uh, time domain. Okay, time domain. Writing of H2. H2, H2 square is equivalent to saying that you only focus on the output Z. 
this minimizes output z in here. But you put this w as all as individually, okay? You have a, a dimension m, so you just add each one individually, you add each one individually with a impulse, okay? So this becomes a impulse response. But because of the coupling, okay? Because of the coupling, whenever you add each of these one, then all the z will show up. Then you add another channel, then all the z will show up. But doesn't matter, I just add them together. Then you put all the m components together. This is the total energy. That is interpreted in the physics way. This is our H2 norm, okay, H2 norm. So that's the entanglement. But you, oh, sorry. So, uh, but you know that uh, in frequency domain, uh, okay, so let's see. Remember, we have learned what is our uh, uh, linear LQR, a linear quadratic uh, control. Cost function is defined by zero to infinity. So linear quadratic, which is function of my controller K. So this is split this one. And if we define, if we define the Z as uh, C1X D1 to U, then it is exactly like this. So if you just define Z1, Z2, just define Z1, Z2, okay. So you define the Z1, Z2, so this is uh, uh, Z equals C1X and D1 to U, okay? So that is, looks exactly like what we have seen before. So that's why we say LQR control like this is a special case of our H2. H2 can be uh, interpreted as H2. Okay? And C1, D1, 2 uh, can be defined uh, something like this. C1 and D1, 2 like this. Okay? Again, I hope you from now on, you think H2 is a generalized LQR, okay? So this type of formulation, uh, they said it's better to do it in two stages, okay? Two stages. The first stage is to do a full state feedback control, okay? Um, then full state feedback control is uh, assuming that I, I have my x, okay? I have my x. Then I construct my u, okay? Then the gain here is never, uh, never constant, I told you, okay? I told you it's not constant. So then how we solve it? What's the problem? The problem is I assume that, I assume that, my uh, full state static full state feedback controller like this, okay, and this one has based on the L LQR, okay, LQR. We know that we can get this k as a static one, okay, static one, and this S solves this algebraic Ricardian equation. So this is our algebraic Ricard equation. Um, so when you put this one, k optimal gain into your original system, it is, is stable, and all the eigenvalues have uh, negative uh, real parts. And the final, when you put this kx in there, the final minimum performance actually is defined by this one. So B1 is giving, S is also giving. So this, how much you can achieve is already predefined. The optimal achievable cost. Okay. So this is very beautiful, isn't it? That was derived in the 60s already. So the proof of this process, it takes how long? Um, it takes um, maybe Maybe two pages, okay?
So this is what we call the worst case. So what is the worst case? So what is the worst? Some people didn't discuss this thing before regarding initial states. Okay, we assume this is zero, then everything is easy. But what if it is not? Okay, so H two problem uh, can be interpreted in the worst case getting uh, setting as uh, the controller minimizing the worst case cost. So we assume that the initial states are all less than one. Okay. Then how to make the signal Z2 to normal uh, min, uh, maximize with respect to uh, the X0, okay? X0. So it's very interesting that we don't know, we don't know. Uh, so if you generally you want to solve, uh, generally you want to solve this one, it's, it will lead to uh, dynamic feedback, dynamic feedback using an uh, output, okay? Um, so, next step is to do a state estimation, okay? State estimation. So then we have, um, state estimation we have, uh, Only uh, consider you have a V, okay? Without a control, without control. So this is what we have here. What's really measure, measurable is the YT, is the YT. Okay. So then how we can reconstruct the, the X? So we call this the state estimator. So of course the estimated X, estimated X, okay? So is based on the output y, okay, output y. So then, of course, this y as input, y as input, x as an x hat as an output. So there must be a, a function f in here. So I want to find out the f is my estimator from the function f, such that the estimated x hat and the real x t, true x t, uh, they are quadratically written in this way. Of course, this is, uh, again, a different channel, okay? You apply the VS uh, impulse. And I, I want to find uh, this F so that I minimize this cost, okay? So what is the solution for that? Uh, this is familiar. The key point is, you have X hat, and you, have, uh, you make a copy, but here there is something called error matrix. And this error matrix uh, is optimal observation, uh, optimal observer gain matrix given by this one here. Okay, this one here. And in here, I hope you understand the P solves this our ARE algebraic Riccardi equation. So if you put this error in for sure, this will be stable. Okay? And all that in values have real parts. And the, the cost is this one, okay? It's the case of this uh, C1 matrix P, okay? So this looks very parallel <laughs> to the state feedback. So I hope in the state feedback, I hope you see there's a K. <coughs> yeah, K opt, now you have K. Then in the state estimator, you have L, L matrix, L matrix, okay, L matrix. Okay. So there is a, a clear, there is a clear, what they call dualities in here. You can see they are very similar, okay, very similar. Duality. So like, uh, if you do A to A transpose C to this one, so it's kind of a uh, dual, dual, okay? It's dual, okay, duality. I hope you see the duality here. So stay, full state feedback and full state estimator, they are kind of dual problem. 
uh, in the sense that both can be only with uh, static feed, uh, static gain feedback matrix. Okay, one is F, uh, one is K, and uh, one is L. Okay, one is L. But I hope in the H two, hope you can see in the H two optimal control case, the overall controller output controller output feedback controller is a dynamic controller K of S. Okay, K of S. That's obvious because the controller itself contains an observer, okay? An observer. So that that part is clear. Okay, so why there's something people here start to call this a standard <coughs> uh, is the city bridge come on filter uh, in the 1960s, okay? Uh, and then there is also a framework for what they call stochastic framework in a st stochastic setting. In that sense, I, uh, I think the formulation will be slightly different. Um, we are going to come back to this one. So once we have done the separate full state feedback, full state estimator, then we put them together, put them together. So you will see that uh, instead of doing, instead of doing full state feedback here, I just use X hat. Okay, X hat. Um, X hat is the output from the from the observer. So. Then you are going to see something very similar. I will just rewrite everything here, and the final minimum co minimum cost achieved by this is we have seen this one. This is ori original uh, LQR, but we also have something here. Okay. Uh, then you will see that we have uh, uh, feedback. Okay. This. K optimal here, and you have L here. Very, you have two gain matrices. Okay. Mm. So, so we can write the H two in a compact form like what we have in here. Okay, I think our slides are just too compact, so that. Don't get it in the first time. Let's take a look at what we have. No. You can see we only have six slides to talk about H2 optimal control. But if I don't explain that a little bit, you, you don't see that very so these are the setup of the problem. We have seen this before. I'm asking where is my, where is my state? We don't have it. Okay, we don't have it. So these are our standard assumptions. Okay. And, uh, so the H2 problem is to find a case such that you make T Z down to minimize. Okay. You can put a square in here, doesn't matter, okay? So so what we are doing here is to uh, solve two gain matrices. One is F, one is L. F is actually is like what we call the full state feedback. We assume the X is measure, measurable. So then, uh -uh. the X is measurable. So then I only do a state feedback, full state feedback, the gain matrix is the F2. I use F2 here is similar like a K opt. We, we just seen in other slide. So with that, uh, but how we can compute this gain? This, this gain is actually given by the B2, X2, okay? The X2 is the solution of this Riccardi equation, the A-R-E, algebraic Riccardi equation. 
Yeah, so you have two algebraic Riccati equations. One gives you answer x2. x2 is like the uh, S matrix in a state feedback case. And y2 is like the P matrix in a uh, state estimator, LQE, linear quadratic estimator. And then you get uh, y2, you, you get error 2 Put error 2 in here, so you get you get estimator. But if you put this estimator as a uh, transfer function matrix, what are you going to get? So the input to this one, the output to this one is your x hat. Okay? And this is your GCS. This is your uh, overall uh, first of transfer function. Okay? So then, Then the overall, although H2 optimal control, optimal control, overall optimal controller is a dynamic controller. Okay? It's a dynamic controller. And this K optimal dynamic controller will give you a, a, a state space realization like this. So you have P, B2F2, B2F2, and L2, L2. C2, ah, L2, C2. And then the final cost is going to be written in a two norm like this. So these are the conclusion and the steps. Okay? These are the conclusion and the steps. So again, you need to solve, <coughs> remember, you need to solve two algebraic Riccard equations. Okay? You need two static gain matrices. One is One is um, for full state feedback, one is for full state estimation, okay? Estimation. So that's H2 problem, that's the solution. The proof actually is something quite different to uh, many books, so in our, uh, in, our, in our textbook. So, because we already prepared ourselves with two things. One is ARE, one is Euler parameterization, control parameterization in the state space case. So then <coughs> our life will be much easier when we parameterize, okay? When we parameterize all the stabilizing controllers. So first of all, we introduce, uh, this is the familiar form, uh, familiar form of the controller is M2, uh, comma Q. So you put all this Q here, M2, comma Q. That's my K, that's my K. Okay? The M2 can be written in this way, okay, in this way. So that's a uh, uh, basic idea. And, uh, okay. So the unique optimal controller will, will get you uh, the M2, zero, so that's the way they pr prove the existence <coughs> of the R R2, uh, H2 controller. So let me go to uh, the other set of slides. That set of slides probably is even better to tell you this. It's a different set of notation. This is from MIT. I know, I know this. He's no longer with MIT. But uh, let's see this. So I, I like his notation. Because he's not using D11, D12, D21. He uses, uh, so again, we have X, Z, Y, right? We have a W and a U. So these are familiar ones. So they will assume that of DZ, W, DZ, U, right? Uh, you have a Y, W, and a Y, U. And C, Z, and C, Y. So this is better, right? And B, W, B, U, and A. Yeah. So this is a better notation, I believe. So this W is a, they call it exogenous disturbance input. Uh, this, the reason we have this input, perhaps this is a, a noise, or we purpose add commands, reference. And Z is performance output for obviously. So this is 
uh, very consistent to what we are doing here. Uh, again, we want to synthesize a controller K. The K itself is K of S, okay? It's a dynamic, it's a transforming matrix. Input is Y and output is U, okay? Like in this picture. Uh, so the close will be stabilized and TZW is minimized, okay? So in particular, uh, controller synthesis with H2 H2 infinity criteria. So, so here we are doing H2. But for H2, H2 norm, they have different interpretations. Okay, I already gave you one about impulse response. Okay, so suppose you have impulse response G T in here. Okay, okay. So L2 norm. Uh, the two norm square is basically the two norm of the G, I, J, T square all add together, okay, add together. Okay. So it's also equals to this uh, transverse G, T, this, again, G, T is the impulse response, okay? And could be the same as here, uh, we use frequency uh, domain. You know, this uh, is identity, okay? So the L2 and H2 space, they all express uh, the energy for the impulse response. Okay. So again, I hope you understand, H2 is for transfer functions, okay? L2 is for signals, okay? It's for signals. So you have two different spaces, okay? So L2 is low, all those signals with their finite energy, and their energy is finite. So that is L2, and here this is H2, okay? I hope, although it's two norm, okay? But sometimes with H2 norm or L2 norm, okay? They are, they are actually the same in this sense here, okay? Uh, we also can say the energy of the response uh, to the impulse response, okay? To the input, is the, the, the input response. But now we also can say that uh, X0 is uh, also initial conditions, and if you are all initial conditions is 1, okay, uh, so we'll be able to see what is my uh, energy uh, of the response to initial conditions. Okay. So, this is an interesting argument that uh, the two norm in L space and H space, uh, if you want to be the same, okay, then high frequency uh, omega to infinity, this guy should be zero. Okay? This is zero. Okay? And in other words, the system must be strictly the proper. They say strictly the causal. And I don't say that direct transmission is not causal, okay? It's causal in and out, direct connection. Um, we probably should say uh, RS infinity, uh, strictly uh, rational transfer function, okay? Anyway, D is zero has a consequence, okay? We are assuming a lot. So assuming this, we're assuming this, okay? So they are equivalent saying that D is zero. So all strictly um, RS infinity. So that's the one uh, explanation of H2, okay? But there's another one to talk about is stochastic thing. This part is missing in a lot of uh, cases. So I'm going to go through this here, okay? So we assume zero is D. So G is strictly proper. So I assume the impulse response is GT. But assuming that you have an input, okay, U, uh, in the U, um, you have a zero mean, okay? That's a stochastic process, remember? And I also assume that the, this is auto correlation function, okay? With a distance of tau. And then this thing is a delta tau, okay? Delta tau. So that means this is a white noise, okay? White noise is a zero mean. And it's all the correlation function of distance is delta theta. So this is white noise, okay? 
call one well, okay why you know this just a mathematical abstraction because we need this one and so that we have finite power finite power so what we need to do is when we add this control u you will have y so the y is actually a random process the random okay so what do you do is to uh, make expectation of this whole thing is a uh, random okay it's a random variable the whole thing is get an uh, expectation of that. Then you send t to infinity. First is finite integral, add all the energy together, get a trace, okay, get a trace. The trace is some sort of uh, a norm, okay? And then our trace is add, uh, all this together, okay? Remember, remember, this is, uh, this is n by one, or uh, this, Sorry, this is uh, usually this is n by one. This is a y by uh, n by one. This is a uh, one by n. Okay, so this is n by n, not y by one. If the y prime y is one by one, right? So it's n by n. Okay, so the trace is just put all the trace together. Remember what is the trace in there? All just the y one square, y two square, y n square. All on, the, on that. Others are just zero. Okay. Just trace together. So this is another way to write H two uh, norm. Okay. Then you integrate that. This can put it in. Uh, then this is the average. Okay. The reason we do average is like mean. Okay. Uh, we're doing this mean. Okay. So by doing that, you put in the response of y. Y equals impulse response. This is impulse response g. Uh, impulse response convolute with input. Then you do another one, it's also convolution. You have, you have d uh, tau 1, d tau 2. Then you do to the dt. Okay, so you just insert these two inside here. So, that will be good. so then you, you end up with uh, this one. The reason is this is impulse. <laughs> this is like white noise, OK? White noise. Only this one, uh, t minus tau, makes sense. Others is not making sense. By doing that, doing that, you finally end up with uh, this this term, okay? This term. And remember, you this t minus tau, you can get this one out. So then this one is basically the same as doing a L2 square norm, okay? So at this point, this is simply by derivation. So in other words, if you have a in, if you have a unit you need white noise to excite the system. <coughs> you get output, you make it output, get its expectation of the two norm, then you will end up with the same thing, L2 norm. And according to D is zero, then this is also true. So the H2 norm uh, in the stochastic setting can also be the same, okay, be the same. Therefore, we do not specifically talk about LKG Gaussian. We not specifically talk about stochastic or random uh, RQ H2 problem because they are the same in this case. So how do you compute H2 norm? So we know that this is impulse response, always something like this. Uh, it's the same, okay? It's the same. And remember, uh, this is uh, impulse response. <laughs> to the power of a, t, and b. d is zero, and uh, d has to be zero, so h2 norm is, uh, is finite. So therefore, we just h2 norm in here is trace of this one, because this is the impulse response. And because we do that, so we can write the trace of the b transpose qb, okay? Q is uh, satisfying this, or p satisfies this. These are all, what well, says? These are the functions, okay, functions. So it can be written as this one or this one. Very beautiful, right? So all these are in the standard textbook. So very beautiful, isn't it? Okay. So in other words, if you are giving A, B, C, you will be able to get this two norm. 
if we can solve this thing. And we have the way to solve the ultimate equations. In my lab, we have that. Okay. So that d block, y to u, we assume is zero. This, uh, we can make that uh, assumption. But from W to Z, can we also make that assumption? So if this uh, H2 norm of system is not strictly proper, then, uh, when then the H2 norm will be infinite. So that's a big that's a problem. However, you can always extract something out okay? uh, at the infinite. So uh, we can remove that from our system so that we can add an equivalent control. So this is something like a bias, okay? I will rewrite the problem such that after the transformation, the DZW, this one, period is zero. If not previously, that this is not zero, you can, you can make it zero by doing transformation. So this is somehow I, I add into my control signal some bios in there. So this is transformable. So therefore, without loss of generality, I can assume this is zero. But in practice, it could be non-zero, okay? Because you can always add a filter on purpose to make some uh, output, okay? Uh, so that this is not zero. And this is uh, going to be infinity, okay? That's possible. For example, for example, what? Uh, for example, what? Uh, you have an integrator, s goes to infinity, this will go to zero. But what if you have s divided by s plus one? So it will go to one, okay? To one. But what if you only have an s, okay? Okay? So like, improper case, then this will also go to infinity. So like, Differentiation, okay? Differentiation is S, okay? Oh, yeah, this will be quick. I'll run through with you very quickly. So we assume we have a full state feedback, then CY is I, and the main disturbance W is zero. And control signal is to minimize uh, something like this. The reason we write this way, we can say if CZ is square root of uh, Q, DZU is uh, this, then we can write uh, this H2 norm. This format is exactly the same as this format. So this is actually called LQR problem. Okay. Uh, this is a very special case to the H2 optimal control part. So when CY is I, I think this is clear. We have seen this. Okay. So how we solve that? It ends up having a solving a uh, algebraic Riccardi equation. Again, here we have to infinity. Okay. There are multiple ways we do the derivation, but this one he is trying to do something fancy, uh, saying that oh, I have a z two norm in here. So then uh, it is a linear condition XF, uh, so I have observability gradients, and uh, satisfy this, uh, the optimal equation. So the closed loop is stable, rewrite above the equation like this, okay, like this. So because of that, so we can say uh, uh, integrand can be written also in this way. Uh, you can do deri derivations. So you assume that your f can be written in terms of a matrix times xf, full state. So you end up with uh, feedback control law like this times f. xf is uh, the solution of my ARE like that. So this derivation looks very naive, but uh, whether this is stabilizing or not. So asking this type of question is can be avoided if we do properly uh, starting with uh, all stabilizing uh, set. 
But this is uh, one way to derive the Hercule law. Okay. So these are the Riccati equation. And the uh, Riccati equation, this part is familiar to us and also familiar to us when we introduce a Hamiltonian matrix. Uh, so this way, uh, the spectra of the edge will be very interesting. So they are anti-symmetric. So, so it means edge and uh, minus edge prime is, uh, they are similar. Uh, they, they share eigenvalues, okay? Negative and complex conjugate. Uh, so that can be used to solve uh, Riccati equation by uh, getting uh, the solution of the uh, edge matrix. Okay? Then you split the edge matrix in two parts, you end up with x, and this x solves the Riccati equation like this. Okay? Like this. So that's a way to solve that. So because if you solve this x, it's very difficult, isn't it? This is a quadratic in here, okay? So these are all the matrices, and x is an unknown, a, r, q, they are given. But what you should do to solve the x is, you construct, giving a and q, r, you, you construct the edge, then you use a numeric method to solve its uh, uh, solution. Uh, x is uh, uh, eigenvectors, okay? So then you, you, you partition these two, you are going to have this um, solution x to this. Okay? So this is very, um, very um, surprising, surprisingly uh, simple to solve uh, uh, ARE. Okay? So let's assume this ARE, we, we get through this one, uh, need uh, some technique solutions to solve general H2 question. So these are standard. Then uh, we do uh, LQR first. So assuming that all state fit, all the states are available. So then you do uh, observer L, so observer. You solve the L gain matrix. Okay. Then in the end, you construct your uh, feedback. Okay. With combine state feedback and observer. Okay. So I think we are in good shape in terms of progress. Let me go back to this one one more time. So now I think we have a deeper understanding about what's behind this line, okay? Uh, there is a full state feedback here, there's a full state estimator here, and we need to solve two algebraic Riccati equation here, okay? And in some places we show that uh, the full state feedback case is uh, exactly a general situation of uh, LQR we discussed before. And uh, so our textbook has a more detailed derivation using the Euler parameterization idea. So I believe it's quite different to lots of textbooks in terms of H2 optimal control derivation. So in the next, so, so you can see that for this whole thing, I only have six, six slides for H2 control. Imagine H2 control can be a book okay, itself. We only have six slides. So I try to add in more so that you have a better understanding. So what about this part? Okay, what about this part? So I want to share with you um, some of those 
two kinds of domain interpretations. Okay? So LQR, why it is always nice? Because if you do LQR design, okay, let's say in the size of case, what we can say about gain phase margin? Okay? That's a very interesting question, and people divide it. Say, oh, phase margin is always greater than 60 degree, and uh, uh, gain margin always better than 60 D. Okay, 60 D. So this is impressive, nice, impressively nice. Okay? Um, Or on the LQG or on the H2 control. So this is based on the assumption that all the states are measurable. But if not measurable, you you can use what? You can you can use you can use uh, estimator or common filtering. Okay, such that such that you can get all the closed loop control stabilized. But the problem is, can we still claim this nice property? The answer is no. In other words, if you don't have a sensor to measure the state, so your the state is to measure, uh, you still can gain the uh, control of this overall system. But the question is, what do you lost? So basically, you lost margins. You lost margins, OK? More liquid, you cannot claim the margin. In other words, the H2 optimal control, it is optimal. Yes, it is. But it is at the price of robustness. That's why we need to combine op optimality and robustness. So we cannot pursue optimality alone. Okay? This is a typical example, and this is well documented in the literature. The first paper showed up in literature is 1978 by John Doyle. Okay, he wrote a very very brief page, a paper, and that in that paper he put an example system, and that example system is shown here. So here, I hope you see that whenever you have H2 controller and LQG, although you achieve optimality, there's no guarantee about your robustness, okay? There's no guarantee. You may, you may not have the needed margin. So in the size of case, there's a documented examples. Let me see if we have enough time to go through the example. Here. So this is a two by two case, okay? It's a two by two case. Let me see. This is. A a, B1, B2, C1, C2. This is D11, this is D22. So these are both zeros, okay? So this is D12, this is D21, okay? D21. Okay, then by this, um, they show that uh, you have a uh, sigma is. Um, B1 is for my uh, noise. The, this is sigma is like noise level, okay? And this is Z is like uh, also linked to the X, okay? X. The first state and the second state, okay? So this one is one, one, and zero, one. So this is a, a second order system. So basically, after you have this A, B, C, D set up, 
So we are talking about nominal optimal control. So then we solve two AREs. I have x2, y2, the solving ARE algebra of the Cali equation. So you have uh, the state feedback gains like this, and uh, the observer gains like this. Okay. And so then you have alpha, beta is linked to the Q, and, and sigma. sigma and the Q are the known the strengths. Is so you can construct this k optimal, okay, k optimal. Uh, this is my uh, state feedback. Overall, no, no, no sorry. This is state feedback and it's uh, state estimator together with this k. Okay. So the control implemented, and then you assume the k will get uh, scaling or fluctuation of the gain. So k optimal times small k, that small k usually is zero, is one, but it could be could be up and down, like plus or minus 20% with k, so 0.8 or 1.2. In this case, you, you perturb the controller a little bit, as if I'm looking into the whole system robustness, right? So then I, I want to uh, change that <coughs> then you will see the closed loop system A matrix will look like this. Then, then this is my determinants, and uh, then uh, we can decide what is the uh, stability uh, linked to this capital K. Uh, small, small K here, small K here. And then you get this. Uh, so if you, your K is slightly away from 1.0, okay? plus or minus in either direction, the whole system got unstable immediately, okay? From this analysis here, okay? From this analysis, no matter which direction you go, okay? So in other words, those Q and Sigma, just those gain margin uh, can be made arbitrarily small, okay? Arbitrarily small. So it is very interesting to say that margin or getting worse when the control weight gets small. Or the system uh, driving noise getting large, you also make this margin smaller, okay? Much smaller, okay. So that's a, a, a very uh, alarming noise, uh, uh, message in the control community, okay? We thought we do an estimator, then close the loop, everything will be fine. Still H2 optimal. But what we lost if we don't do state feedback, we do output feedback. Doing output, output feedback, then we can make our system margin arbitrarily small. Meaning you are optimal, but you could be very, very fragile. Okay? Fragile is the opposite of robustness, okay? So optimal usually corresponding to fragile, which is intuitively true. You, you stand in a top, you got perturbation, you will fall. So uh, you, you are optimal, but you will be fragile, okay? Uh, that's intuitively true, but how do you avoid that? So therefore, we need to put optimality and robustness together as a trade-off. So in this chapter and next chapter, we only focus on nominal performance, how we, how we solve that problem. Okay, basically how we solve this TZW. Either we put two here or infinity here. Okay, uh, unfortunately we did uh, mu here, but uh, it didn't work 100% nicely because Depending on the uh, uncertainty structures, it, it may not exist for those DQ iteration stuff. Okay, so now we focus on this two norm. Okay, this two norm H two is a special case of uh, LQR, and this is like nineteen sixties. Okay, but uh, how we can use the current language, the more general setting. And I think our textbook, Cummins, Cummins, uh, Cummins book, 
is probably the best in terms of logic, in terms of uh, conciseness. So next lecture, we are going to talk about this. And uh, this problem, edge infinity problem, was attacked by a lot of people. Because edge infinity problem is like worst case, meaning even in the worst case, I still work, okay? So that answers some of the robustness issue, okay? Okay? Although there are still uh, a lot of questions. So how to solve this one was not done until 1991, okay? Surprisingly, it's recent. There's a four, there's a four, Co-authored uh, with four co-authors, the paper on the TAC. That's that's that uh, important paper with John Doyle or Kakunato, Case Glover. That's another one. I forgot. <laughs> the four person uh, solved this problem. <coughs> so there's a long history about H infinity. It's not solved for a long time. Nobody believed it's solved until. I publish this paper. I'll upload this paper for you guys to take a look. It's hard to follow. But now, after a lot of different authors interpret different ways, like I did for H2, I hope you have a better understanding about H2. If I threw only six, six pages in here, no way you can absorb H2. Okay, it's so dense. Uh, same thing is true for H-infinity. If I cover 10 minutes, I can do 10 minutes, I just done. But it will not be useful. We need to still get into that uh, details, okay? Um, then next lecture will be next Monday, uh, on the April, uh, in, uh, November 4th. So I'll, I'll give lectures that day. Then another one is on November 6th, uh, we'll still come in here, and Professor Zhang, Dong Mei Zhang will walk you through the robust control toolbox. You will see that a lot of commands, a lot of uh, work can be done in MATLAB directly. However, you really need to understand that after, behind this command what's going, what's really going on, so that uh, you don't get your problem solved and you don't understand how to interpret it's clearly behind it. So this course serves that theoretic foundation for that. So um, I think today H2, I hope I have further explained it to you uh, from three different view angles, okay? And view angles. I'll upload all the PDFs for you, so please continue to read. And I'll see you uh, next Monday. I'll finish Monday on Etching Finger Cycle. And I'm going to give you a new batch of uh, homework. So, and uh, again, today I will be in a lab and spend time with you. Okay? See you later. Bye bye.